Hello everybody, today's video is going to be about my favourite lens that I use all the time uh, shooting on mirrorless, so I shoot it on Fuji, uh, the X-T1 and the X-E1 uh, which I still love and still use those two cameras uh, recording this in 2018 um, but I also use this lens uh, on all my film uh, cameras uh, where it will mount all my Nikon cameras and um, in it, this, this, the lens that we're gonna, I'm going to talk about is a lens that kind of then got me into certain um, types of older Nikon or Nikkor lenses and the lens is if you look at this collection here see if you can kind of guess now um, it isn't lost on me that starting a video with a whole load of lenses like this is um, almost looks like a, a video by uh, maybe the angry photographer who um, I remember watching his videos a couple of years ago and, and just uh, loving the humor in them and and the knowledge that that he uh, has on on old Nikon lenses and and that definitely helped get me into them um, and uh, with this lens, he would he might say something like, you know, this is silk, sex and sugar, pure perfection, absolutely the cat's ass, the bee's knees, incredible bokeh, incredible saturation, incredible micro contrast, sharp as piss, absolutely crotch melting, finer than the wax crotch of a Swedish supermodel, make your tongue beat your brains out. <laughs> um, but I probably wouldn't say that, but uh, it's definitely a lens that I absolutely uh, love and just... Uh, out of these lenses, it is the Nikkor S 1.4 50mm uh, prime lens. And um, it's just, I mean, with this lens, it's just, it's all metal. There's no rubber. So uh, on the later Nikon lenses, they've got these kind of rubber grips. Uh, you can see that kind of here. Um, but with these early, early kind of Nikon lenses, there's just this tank-like build quality. They just keep on going. Um, this will be working probably just as it is today in another 30 years uh, with no problems at all. Um, and it's just full of loads of character, this lens. Uh, there are 50 millimeter lenses out there that would uh, be sharper across the frame and they'd probably be uh, sharper wide open, have more contrast wide open. Uh, 1.4 than this lens but um, and, and from f2.8 onwards this lens is as sharp and as um, contrasty uh, as any like modern 50 lens I've used or you know in terms of you know uh, when you get the photos back uh, from the lab or you develop your own film or if you shoot digital it's just you look at the photos they're fantastic and between f1.4 and f2.8 that's kind of where this is almost like an art lens. It's just got loads of character because it isn't a perfect lens. Um, I've I had uh, I've got other Nikon uh, 50 millimeter lenses that I used before I got this, and I don't know. They just this this lens just has some soul to it, um, and they're not that expensive. You can pick them up uh, pretty cheap, um, maybe sort of 50 pounds, 60 pounds, something like that, uh, and just put this on your mirrorless camera or put this on your Nikon camera. And a film camera, um, although it'll it'll mount on most like pro model uh, digital uh, uh, Nikon cameras, like full frame cameras, no problem at all. Um, and just have a look at the pictures that you get. It's certainly if you want um, if you're shooting wide open f 1.4, kind of f 2, uh, the pictures will have a kind of more filmic look. They'll they'll look like something from a certain time. Um, it just has a really unique. Uh, nice kind of look to it. Um, okay, it's technically not perfect. Um, you know, as I say, 50 millimeter lenses exist that are, are razor sharp, probably uh, are all apertures. Um, yeah, it has less, you know, contrast at 1.4. You know, yeah, it's got a bit of vignetting in the corners, wide open, and it's got some um, spherical aberration kind of under f4. Um, but uh, it all just gives this lens a kind of unique character, and uh, photos uh, shot digitally look. You know more like they were shot on film uh if, if that's kind of what you're going for uh when shot wide open anyway or f kind of under f 2.8 i'd say uh if you're shooting them on a on a fuji so um if uh i've got my kind of fuji xt1 here and uh, i use it on that all the time um but i i also use it um 
on my Nikon F and I just absolutely love it and, and it's just a nice size as well it's got these kind of scalloped focusing and uh, it's just lovely and, it, and just a just a beautiful looking piece of engineering as well um, I've got the uh, the original kind of Nikon 52 millimeter L39 filter on here which kind of adds a bit to the look and um, but anyway so I'll cover a little bit of the history on this lens uh, I've kind of rambled on, on a bit about why I like it, but okay. So um, they they made these from. Uh, hang on, let me put that in the middle there. This is the uh, twenty millimeter UD lens, by the way, in case you're interested. Another fantastic lens. Um, but yeah, so the fifty millimeter f one point four. So they, Nikon made it from sixty six to nineteen seventy four. As I say, it's got a fifty two millimeter filter thread. Um, it was a pre AI lens. Um, and uh, pre-AI pre -AI lenses, and this is the 50F2, uh, which can be had for even cheaper. Um, maybe it's not got quite as much character as the 1.4, but these are good lenses as well. Um, and you, you get these off and on camera bodies. You, but, yeah, I'm looking for a camera that I want. It might come with one of these, for, you know, sort of on the, almost like a body cap just on the, on the camera. Um, so I've ended up with two um, slightly different versions of the same lens, but um, that's the F2. Um, but just to show you, so as I say, made from 66 to 74, and it's a, this is a, a pre-AI lens, but mine's been uh, professionally AI converted by Nikon. And kind of what that means is when this came out of the factory, uh, it would have looked like this. So um, look at the back. It's just smooth all the way across. There's no notch there to couple with the camera, with the prong on the camera. So on um, on a... On a film camera um, from kind of 1977 onwards, they have like a coupling prong that meets with the the back of the the back of the lens. But um, come from I think 55 to was it 59? Sorry to to 77. Uh, the lenses just came like uh, well a lot of the pre AI pre AI lenses all had like, were like this. Um, and then what happened was they switched to coupling with the prong um, off, without using the prong. Uh, here on the top, they switch to using a kind of ridge on the back of the lens, which you can see. You see that ridge there. And that ridge is what catches on the on the um, the kind of um, aperture prong on the uh, tab. Sorry, on the on the body of the of the let of the bod um, <laughs> on the body of the camera, and that does the aperture instead of the prong. Now, if you've got a lens that has the prong and this sort of cut out section here for mounting with the tab on the camera body, then you've got the best of both worlds. That lens will work with a Nikon F like this because, sorry, I'm running out of space here. So if you've got a camera that's got the prong and is an AI lens, so it's got this cut out section on the back here, then the prong will work with the pin here. Okay, on, on these older kind of um, pre-AI cameras um, but and that's what that prong mounts with that but if you've got this uh, this section here where it's kind of cut out then that means that if you're shooting on uh, a more modern well <laughs> I'd say more modern but uh, a camera kind of from 77 onwards uh, you've got the the tab there and that tab that tab meets with this cut out ridge here. So if you can get this lens where it's a, where it was a pre-AI lens but it's been AI converted and then and the kind of dead giveaway is the prong will still be on it but it'll have little holes there in it and that's kind of so that the numbers can be read through the viewfinder I think. Uh, these little numbers here, the, uh, the light, because if those holes weren't there those, those little numbers would be cast in shadow and you would be able to see them through the viewfinder so they put little holes in. Um, but, but basically what you're looking for is that there's a, there's a ridge here. It's been, and people can cut that out on these pre-AI lenses. You do see people who've, who've cut that section out so that they can use these on like a Nikon FE or a Nikon FM. Um, but yeah, so fantastic lens. 
Uh, it's a, you know, I own quite a few 50 millimeters, but this one, I just always reach for this and the other 50 millimeters sit in the drawer. Um, it's just lovely because you've got that F2.8 onwards. It's a standard kind of Nikon uh, 50 millimeter. It's just, it's comparable to, to any sort of 50 millimeter that I own, but then you've got that F1.4 to F2.8 where it's just got all that character there that when you need it, you know? Um, and if you can get it AI converted like this, which um, the ones that are like this, they were sent. They were basically sent to Nikon at the time, and they will have converted it. Uh, you do see people that have, as I say, converted themselves, but they look a bit more kind of rough. Uh, and and the other thing to think of is if you see lenses that have been AI converted by Nikon, so they've got the proper um, that basically they took this back section off and put an AI converted uh, ring on the back, so it has the notch properly there, the proper Nikon prong the little numbers that's a, you know that's been done by them in the factory somebody sent that lens back that's been sent back because they love this lens it was a good a good copy of the lens you know you do get some kind of uh, variations in in production and if it's a good one you're going to send it back you know you're a pro photographer you want uh, your lens to carry on working you send it back to Nikon and they would put this on and i think they did it for free initially um, they'll put this on so it's an ai lens now and will work with your FM and your FE and you know this will work with an FM3A or a Nikon F, F2, F3 uh, so it's a good indication that that's a great lens as well um, obviously you need to check for things like fungus and stuff with older lenses but I mean this this lens is absolutely spotless um, and I absolutely love it um, and then and I appreciate this is this is a bit of a rambling video but because of this lens it kind of got me into getting these all metal no kind of rubber grips and like you know Nikon start doing all these sort of plastic I mean these are these are tough lenses still but you know it's plastic and rubber um, and there's just something really tactile about shooting with these these this lenses from this period and if you can get them AR converted then all the better and that that got me into starting to collect them and I just absolutely love these older lenses and I try and always get them with the Nikon AI converted uh, rear, rear ring on them so the 20 millimeter UD lens is absolutely fantastic. There's like a whole Facebook group on this and other groups online, people who are just massive fans of this and just talk about this lens. Um, it's got a bit of a cult following. Um, and, and I, and you know, I got one, uh, I managed to get it at a good price. Uh, and it had, um, it had a bit of uh, fungus on the, on the rear element and uh, I managed to unscrew, uh, the rear element, uh, and clean it all, put it back together. And now this lens is absolutely perfect. And, and the same as this, AI converted, it's got the tab on. Um, so I can use it with a Nikon F because it's got the prong, but I can use it um, with an FM or an FE or anything like that uh, because I've got that AI conversion. Um, and it just kind of snowballs from there really. I'm always on the lookout for my kind of favorite series now of lenses that Nikon made, which is these, these pre-AI lenses all metal construction with the scout focus rings but that have been AI converted by Nikon here's the uh, another one 24 millimeter f 2.8 again absolutely fantastic lens bags of character um, and they're just gorgeous as well to look at and they're just and when you and when you're using them they're all metal they just are a joy uh, this one is had some heavy use as you can see from how worn it is uh, this is the uh, 35mm f2. Um, again, managed to get one AI converted uh, by Nikon from back in the day. Yeah, I, what I should say is there, there are people that will AI convert uh, these, but uh, I'm not sure they're going to do the same job as, you know, you're a pro photographer in the 60s or 70s. You send your lens out back to Nikon because you absolutely love it. Uh, and you know it's optically it's a good copy of it so you want to get it AI converted so you send it back you send it off to them they do it and they send it back to you and you keep using that lens and sometimes people are obsessed with getting a, a perfect you know minty looking uh, lens but if one's been heavily used that's actually a sign that it was a great lens that somebody loved and used um, and they might well have been like a pro photographer and, and that's why it's got that much use and that's why they bothered to send it back to get that conversion so it's actually a good sign uh, if it has been someone's bothered to get it converted so um, that definitely attracts me to it um, and then another all metal one and that's the uh, the 45 millimeter f 2.8 GN uh, auto nickel lens 
Um, and this is a bit of an oddball, it's a bit of a sort of super pancake lens. But uh, again, I think these were pretty much all made pre-AI. Uh, there is a, like a silver version that came out with the FM3A, but all the black ones, I think, are all much older um, pre-AI lenses. But there are some out there. Uh, you know the good ones. They will have somebody will have gone. Oh, I'm going to get that AI converted so I can keep using it, and uh, managed to snap that up at a good price as well. Um, now I've kept these two at the moment. These these two fifties uh, that that aren't converted, and they they work great. If I put them on a Nikon F, they work great. But obviously, if I put them on a uh, if I put them on my FE two, well, I wouldn't put them on my FE two. And the reason why is because they haven't had that notch cut out on the back if I tried to mount that on here it would damage that prong because there's nothing there's no notch to go round it to, to couple so I need to be you know you need to remember not to use pre-AI lenses on cameras that have this tab now some cameras maybe the f3 I'm not sure you can actually move the tab back so it won't damage it. And um, I think you can definitely do that maybe like the Nikon DF as a digital camera. Um, but, but generally, pre-AI lenses that haven't been converted to AI, I tend to avoid because I want to be able to use them. I want to be able to use my lenses on my Nikon F, F2, uh, and then all the way up to kind of my FE2 and uh, FE and F3 and everything else. Um, but what I would say is these pre-AI lenses, if you do see them and they're a good price and they haven't been converted and you're watching this video because you want to use a lens like full of character on mirrorless, then, um, you know, something like the X-T series, like X-T, this is an X-T1, but, you know, X-T2, X-T3, obviously there's no prong on here. This You just adapt it. So... It doesn't matter whether it's had that section cut out and it's pre-AI or, or not. Um, you can just, hang on, I'm trying to do this one-handed. You can just uh, mount that. Done. And, you know, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's only with the pre-AI where they haven't had the little notch cut out. You need to be careful about using them on like a, on a, on a, camera make I think it's from 77 onwards that they they went over from using the the kind of coupling prong on the top uh, oh in case you're wondering uh, so XT1 I've got a standard kind of adapter that goes from Nikon to, to Fuji but and I cover this in one of my other videos but uh, I use the Zongi lens turbo too and that's a uh, focal reducer so or speed booster so when you're using when i'm using my favorite lens uh that's kind of basically stays a 50 instead of becoming like a 79 80 millimeter lens when i put this on here it uh focal reduces it so it stays around 50 millimeter um but because it's a speed booster and these do cost a bit more but they are worth it because it's a speed booster when i use this lens on here uh, not only does it behave, behave like a 50 millimeter lens, but it, it makes it faster. So it's faster than f1.4. So it's more like an f1.2, um, which is just a kind of bonus of shooting mirrorless and having a focal reducer, uh, which I love. So um, that was it, really. It was a bit of a mad ramble. I haven't done a video in a while. So thank you for your patience in waiting this long for this video and coming up to almost like 20 minutes now, if you've got this far. <laughs> Um, let me know if there's any videos that you want me to make um, about uh, mirrorless, Fuji, uh, Nikon lenses, uh, anything like that, um, Nikon cameras, and, and I will. Um, and like and share, and I'll continue to make videos. Thank you very much.